Good. If I combine 9x and negative 12x, my coefficients are 9 and negative 12. I use the addition rule, different signs, subtract the, so subtract the numbers, keep the sign of the bigger number, we get what? Negative 3x. Perfect. Cross them out. Next thing I'm looking for is anything that matches up like term-wise with a negative 3z. Do I have anything with a negative 3z? Yes. yes. Yeah, we're always looking for the same variable parts. That's what's giving us those like terms. So negative 3z and positive 3z. Yeah. If you use addition rule, if you think about it, addition rule, those have different signs, right? You subtract. 3 minus 3 is? Zero. zero. It doesn't matter about the sign of the bigger number because there's no bigger number. You have zero. So what do you put down here? Plus seven. You plus could z. put you could put plus zero z, right? Can you put this? Please watch on the board right now, because this is where people make a, a mistake when they're first learning this. They'll go, okay, well if I have zero z's, don't I just put that? No, no that's no. one. No, How much z's is that? One. one. Okay, it can't be mo mean both one and zero, can it? Because here it means one. It can't mean zero here if it's zero. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Can't mean both. So if you have zero z's, you do this. You can do that, but you go, well, we're not going to Oz or anything. How much is zero? <laughs> just joking. How much is zero z's? How much is that? Nothing. Zero. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, remember, this is zero times z, right? Whatever you put in here, you multiply it by zero. Zero times anything is zero, right? Are you with me? Yeah. You can put the zero, <coughs> but does the zero do anything? No. Do you have to put anything? No. no. These things are just gone. They, when you add the opposite of a number or the opposite of a like term, it's going to create a zero. You don't actually have to put the zero unless you really want to. But at the very end, we're not going to have anything in that space. So we're going to have no z's. No z's there. And then we go, OK, we, we take care of that. Is there anything else? Plus seven. Seven. Yeah, whatever I haven't crossed out, I look for like terms. If it's a, just a term by itself, it gets added on to the very end. And we're done. So what happened to the z's? Uh, they're gone. They simplified to zero. Okay, moving on. That was a good one. I hope you guys got that one down. Moving on, we got a couple R's up here. I see a negative 2R, and that matches up with what on this? Negative 2R and negative 8R will combine using the addition rule. So that's going to start us out. That's gone. Next up, I look for my next term in line. I have a plus 7x. I circle the term with the sign. X. X, okay. So I'm going to circle that with the sign. I've got 7x. I've got x. That gives me... 8x. 8x. Yeah. Plus 8x. Plus 8x. Okay, so I'm not just going to write things like like 8x like that, right? That doesn't make, that really doesn't work well yeah. for us. We want to make sure that if, we're, if we say positive in our head, we really do have a plus when we're combining like terms. That's gone. And then anytime we have those numbers, they're automatically like terms. Negative 12 plus 8, negative 12, and plus 8 give us? Negative 4. four. four. And we're going to write R? Minus four. Minus 4. Good. Remember, we say negative, but we're kind of tricking the problem a little bit. We're doing this because you could write a plus negative, and you can go back from a plus negative to a minus. That's why the negative translates back to a minus. That's why that works. Can I combine these? No. How are these? No. Anything else? No. No, no like terms? You're done. This is kind of a good one, to, too, right? Yeah. You have to really be watching yourself on this one. So I'm looking at 3x squared y. Nice. Let's see what's the like term. Is it this one? Yeah. No. 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 They're, they're close, right? I mean, look at that. Squared y. There is a square in both. There's an x, there's a y in both. But this x is being squared, this x is not. Yeah. This y is being squared, this y is not. So these are not like terms. These are not like terms. These ones, those are like terms, though. So you have x squared y at the very end. Notice how the variable part is identical in both of those situations. So we circle both those. How much is 3x squared y and negative 2x squared y when I combine those? Positive x squared y. Do you have to write 1x squared y? No. x squared y. Should you write 1x squared y? No. Yeah. Is it wrong? No. It's technically technically not wrong. Are you ever going to see it in a math book? The no. answer is no. You know what? We, when we mean one of something, we write it like that. That means one x, right? Yes. Didn't it? Yes. And this means one z. If we want one x squared y, we really don't need the one. You're never going to see it. You don't need it. So x squared y implies there's only one of them. That's it helps you. You can put it though. You can put it but on your final answer. I want to see that. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Just because I don't want you to get in the habit of thinking that this means zero, mm -hmm. I want you to notice that this means one. If you have to write the one, then in your head there's something different between this and that. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I have to have them be the same thing in your head. So those are gone. And then here we get the negative 9xy squared. We also have another xy squared there. We add those together, negative 9 and positive 4 gives us how much, folks? Good. So we're going to write the minus. Yeah, I was just talking about that. The answer is, at the end of your problem, no, it's not okay. It's not okay. Because I, I do need you to notice there is no difference between this and that. Um, so it, like I was saying, if you have to write this, it means there's a difference in your head between this one and that one, I can't have that take place. It's got to be the same. Can I combine these? Nope. You're done. That's as far as you can go. How many will feel okay with what we just talked about? Good. Very good. If you can do these, you're going to be okay for the rest of our chapter three as far as combining like terms. That's, that's good news. Very good news. Now, for the rest of our time, we're going to talk just a little bit about multiplication. I'll also explain to you why we don't put the one in front of a term like that. Let's multiply. Let's say that you had some four x's and you, you had five of them. Instead of wanting to add up 4x plus 4x plus 4x plus what? Five times. We want to do the multiplication version of this. How in the world can we multiply a number times a variable? Or a number times uh, a term with a variable part? The answer is, I'm going to show you back with some multiplication rules that this is possible just by looking at the coefficients again. Do you remember that multiplication is not only commutative, which means you can switch it around, it's also associative, which means I can group it however I want. Do you remember that? So instead of having 5 times 4x, which really means 4 times x, I really could group this, instead of the 4x, I could group the 5, 4, couldn't I? So here I could do, instead of 5 times 4 times x, I could do 5 times 4 times x. That's legal to do. That's, that's the associative property. But then it would just be 20x? Why would it be 20x? Because the x is on the outside. Yeah, OK. So how much is the 5 times 4? 20. It's 20. So this would be the same thing as 20 times x. How much is 20 times x? Yeah, we usually don't write 20 times x. We just write 20x. <coughs> now, of course, I showed this to you to prove that it's right. But do you have to do this every time? Or can you just look at this and get straight to here, do you think? Yes. You sure you can. You go, hey. Yeah, why, why can't we just do that? Why can't we just say, 5 times 4x, well that's 20x. And the answer is you can. This is the reason why you can. You can reassociate every single time. That means whenever you multiply a constant times a variable term, all you have to do is multiply the coefficient. You with me on this? Let's do a couple more of these things and then we'll call it a day in about five minutes or so. Let's try this one. 7 times 4a. Ladies and gentlemen, how much do you think that's going to be? 28. Good. The a's not going to change, right? That's not becoming squared or anything. Nothing crazy. We're just going to have 28a. Yeah, we multiply that constant times that variable, specifically the coefficient, and we're good to go. Does it matter the order in which you multiply? No. So if I take 8x times 2, how much is 8x times 2 going to be? Perfect. Do you suppose it work with, works with negatives as well? Yeah. Yes. Negative 6, notice that's a negative 6 out front, not a minus 6, a negative 6. Negative 6 times 9y, how much is negative 6 times 9y, what do you think? Why is it negative? Okay, so you need to realize that we're going to be changing back and forth on our rules that we're using. Right here we're using multiplication rules, that's why they're getting the negative 54, right? That's why we're not doing, oh, sign of the bigger number, all that stuff, because this is not addition. 
Here we'd be using multiplication rules, then we combine like terms, we're, we're switching back to addition rules. Are you with me on this? You'd be really good at that. Because the signs are what people mess up. So of course we're going to have 54y that's definitely going to be negative because we had a negative times a positive. How about 3 times negative 4z like this, folks? How much is that going to be? Can you tell me? 12. 12z. Okay. Definitely have the negative, though. Make sure we get that. Let's try a couple more. Show you why we don't put the 1 out front, and we'll be done. What's this one mean? Is it still multiplication? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's got those parentheses right next to each other. This is a negative 2. That's a constant. That's a constant term. Times. What's the coefficient here? Negative 1. 1 or negative 1? Negative 1. If it's negative 1, say negative 1. Yeah, we've got negative 1 here. If we multiply these things, we're multiplying negative 2 times a negative 1. we got 2. Positive or negative? Positive. 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 Why? Because the negative and the negative were multiplying there using that rule. How about negative 3 times negative 4y? Everybody, how much is that? 12y. How much is 1 times x? 1. How much is 1 times 7? 7. Do you do this when you write 1 times 7? Do you write 1, 7? No. No, that would be 17, right? You don't keep writing 1 times 7, do you? No. No. 1 times x is x? 1 times 7 is 7, right? No, 1 times x. What? 1 times x. Yeah, right. What's 1 times 7? What's 1 times x? So if we turn in our homework and we have a 1, we're going to get it wrong. I'm probably not going to mark you down in your homework, right? But you're not going to see the answer in the back of the book, are you? And you're probably not going to put that in your test, because then I'll be like, yeah, they really don't understand what's going on here. So yeah, I probably will mark you down on a test or something. Just because when you do this, you go 1 times 7, 7. Don't pick up here. we got a couple minutes. 1 times x, it is x. In fact, if you wanted to do 1x like this, 1x like that means 1 times x, right? Yeah. This is yeah. what that means. So 1x means 1 times x means x. Same thing would happen in this case, ladies and gentlemen. If you wanted to do um, negative 1x, negative 1x actually means negative 1 times x. What's negative 1 times x? Negative it's negative one. x. It's just like doing negative 1 times 5. Negative 1 times 5, you're gonna, not going to put negative 1, 5. You gotta keep writing that, you need to put negative five. For the same reason, that's why we don't write the one in front of those. One times anything gives you that anything back again. Negative one times anything gives you negative of that anything that you put in there. That's what the X stands for in this case. How many people understand why now we don't really write the one? The fact that write the one. Write the one on the one. Write the one. Write the one. Well, we don't write the one. Whatever. Did today make sense for you, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Yeah. Good deal.